Is the Sony RX100 Mark 7 still worth buying in 2023? I'm here at Sony Condo, which is a conference for creators, and they gave us an opportunity to rent out any Sony camera gear. So among the many cameras that I decided to try out, I picked up the RX100 Mark 7 because as you guys know, I love compact, high quality cameras. And even though this camera came out in 2019, it's still really popular for a lot of reasons, which I'll go into detail in this video but I wanted to see if those reasons were still applicable in 2023. So in this video, I'll give you the pros and cons of using this camera based on my experience with it, as well as show you plenty of sample footage and photos that I took with the camera, including this video, which is currently being filmed on that camera. So let's start with the pros. This is truly a pocket-sized camera. It is smaller than most modern-day smartphones, so it will definitely fit in your pocket or a small purse. It comes with a pop-up LCD display so you can use it to vlog, and also a little viewfinder, which is pretty rare on small cameras these days. And it even has a built-in flash, which is also a pop-up. This camera can shoot 20 megapixel stills as well as up to 4K 30 frames per second video, and it has the option to add some built-in stabilization. It also has a few pro-level features, such as the ability to shoot in S-Log2 or S-Log3 if you like to color grade your footage. And even though this is an older Sony camera, it still has really good autofocus. Like I can see it right now on the display, like it is tracking my eyes even as I'm moving across the frame. It is really good autofocus considering it came out in 2019. But I think the biggest selling point of this camera besides its compact size is the built-in lens. This lens can go from 24 millimeters to 200 millimeters, which is insane for a camera of this size. And the image quality is actually quite good, even if you're zoomed in all the way at 200 millimeters. And the f-stop is pretty respectable as well. But despite those pros, there are a few cons. And in my opinion, they're mainly related to the fact that this camera was last updated in 2019. So a lot of the technology, although it's good, it's gotten a lot better in most recent Sony cameras. So first of all, that autofocus that I mentioned, although it is very good, autofocus, if you can believe it or not, has gotten even better on Sony cameras. And the same is true for the built-in stabilization. I would say that even though this camera does have pretty decent stabilization, the latest Sony cameras are definitely doing it a lot better. But even if you don't shoot video, one thing that is a con of this camera that I do think most people will find a little bit annoying is that menu system. It's that older Sony menu system that many people don't like and they find confusing. I even have a hard time with it because I've gotten used to the newer Sony cameras that have a much better, more intuitive menu system. So that can be a bit of a trick if you're just getting started with this camera and have never used another camera like it before. Now physically, this camera also is a little dated in the fact that it has a micro USB port, does not have a USB-C. The battery is also pretty dated. I mean, it is the same battery that the Sony ZV-1 uses and the ZV-1 Mark II, but it's not the best battery out there in terms of battery life. In terms of other ports on this camera, it does actually have a 3.5 millimeter microphone jack for attaching your own external microphone phone, which is pretty key for me for any camera that I'm going to use for video. But despite that, it actually does not have a cold shoe or multifunctional shoe on the camera. So if you want to add your external microphone, you actually have to buy a cage or some other way to attach that microphone on top of the camera, even though you can plug it in. So overall, I do like this camera a lot, but I like it for photography. I don't really like it for video especially for vlogging. I mean, you can use it to vlog. I'm actually doing that right now. And some of the features are great for vlogging, but if you want a really good compact video camera that is especially focused on vlogging or content creation, then I would recommend looking at the Sony ZV line instead specifically the Sony ZV-1 or the ZV-1 Mark II. I've reviewed both of those cameras and I'll leave a link in the description below if you want to check that out. But in terms of photography, I think this is a really great little compact camera. I think it works for professionals like me who may not want to lug around their giant cameras all the time and want a little pocket-sized camera instead. And I also think that this is a great camera that's an alternative to an iPhone or a smartphone. You guys know that I love shooting with my iPhone, and I shoot with it quite a bit in terms of photos and videos. But the thing is, the phones still don't quite have the image quality that little compact cameras like this do. 
Like when I see the images side by side, I see a lot more artificial sharpening coming from the iPhone, and it doesn't quite meter properly all the time, and it wants to turn everything into an HDR photo or HDR video. So in my opinion, the photo quality and even the video quality coming out of Sony cameras like this one, even though they are a little bit older, it just looks a lot more natural and professional. And it's something that I'd be more willing to print and hang on my wall versus something that's coming out of my iPhone. And besides image quality, the great thing about this camera, like I mentioned earlier, is the fact that it has that phenomenal zoom range. But the more you zoom in on a phone, that image quality really starts to degrade. I mean, it's looking better and better, but it just doesn't compare to what a small camera like this can do if you really want to zoom into your shot. Now another bummer though about this camera is that it is rather expensive. It's still being sold even though it is older and it hasn't been replaced with a new model. So you can get it brand new, but it costs 1300 US dollars brand new, which is quite a bit of money. I mean, that's more money than I paid for my iPhone 14 Pro. But because it's been around for so long, there are lots of used copies out there. So you can find them for 900 or 800 dollars or even less than that. So look around for a good used deal if you are interested in trying this camera. Out. So those are my thoughts about the Sony RX100 Mark 7. In general, I do think it's a good buy if it suits your needs, especially if you're a photography focused person who wants to step up your photo and video quality from your iPhone. I think this is a really great little starter camera for you. But if you are a more video focused person that still wants something that's compact and a step up in quality from your phone, then I would still look at the Sony ZV line instead. But anyway, you guys let me know what you think in the comments below. If you have this camera, or if there's another little compact camera that you prefer instead, let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching, and remember, when in doubt, just shoot it.